As stewards of God's creation, we are neglecting to fulfill our duty to restore and protect our environment. We are negatively changing the world around us from pollution to overpopulation. We have disrupted the cycle that is essential to all life, the carbon cycle. The earth is getting warmer and warmer, yet we continue to deplete our resources, releasing more carbon into the atmosphere. We increase the concentration of atmospheric pollutants, gradually damaging the natural cycle on Earth. Due to our recklessness, we have unintentionally created harmful species that continue to spread prolifically. We must now restore, manage, and protect our environment in order to protect all life, despite having complicated process. I am Janielle. I am Noah. I am Dave Arson. I am Oliver Mendoza. I am Katrina Escanela. I am Gia. I am Daniel. And this is Exploring the Natural World, the Fauna with Respect to the Carbon Cycle. The Carbon Cycle is a circulation of carbon in different forms through natural processes in which the carbon is one of the key components to Earth's existence. Carbon dioxide is the source of carbon found in air or dissolved in water. The chief agents of carbon dioxide fixation through photosynthesis are the algae and terrestrial gain plants, whereas the water and carbon dioxide are turned into carbohydrates. The producers are using these compounds in order to maintain metabolism as the stored products, which are then consumed by animals resulting in other forms. The animals produce carbon dioxide which is released to the atmosphere that is derived from respiration. The carbon dioxide released by decay in animal waste and other organisms is where the carbon is present and a sequence of microbial conversions. Now, the importance of fauna in the carbon cycle is that animals are able to mediate carbon exchange between ecosystems and the atmosphere. Animals travel across landscapes, which creates dynamism in shaping the landscape scale variation through storage and carbon exchange. Due to the role of carbon dioxide in climate, carbon cycle feedback is designed to keep global temperature within certain limits so that the climate is never too hot nor too cold to support life on Earth. This process is a large scale example of the Le Chatelier's principle. This principle states that if a balanced reaction is interrupted by the addition or elimination of a reactant, the reaction would be modified in such a way that they try to get the chemical species back to its original concentration. Now we go into anthropogenic activities. Anthropogenic activities are the things that humans do that has an impact towards the environment. This can drastically change the biophysical environments, the ecosystem, and the natural resources. This can have an indirect or direct impact towards the environment. Now, what are the effects of anthropogenic activities? Now, for humans and the environment, due to the anthropogenic activities, the ecosystems have been severely affected up to the point that the natural order and the food cycle has been affected. This can lead to imbalance in nature that can result in extinction of some species and shortage in food. Now, for a carbon cycle, carbon cycle is also affected by anthropogenic activities like deforestation and irresponsible fishing because about 78% of Earth's oxygen comes from the ocean and 28 is coming from the rainforest. According to National Geographic, these human activities cause the amount of CO2 or carbon dioxide in our atmosphere to rise, which is about 81%. Invasive species are non-native organisms that causes ecological or economical harm in an environment leading to a distortion of balance in an ecosystem. They are primarily spread by human activities often unintentionally. People and the goods we use travel around the world very quickly and they often carry uninvited species with them. For example, ships can carry aquatic organisms in their ballast water while smaller boats may carry them on their propellers. These species are capable of causing extinctions of native plants and animals, reducing biodiversity, competing with native organisms for limited resources, and altering habitats. The direct threats of invasive species include preying on native species, outcompeting native species for food or other resources, causing or carrying disease, and preventing native species from reproducing or killing a native species young. 
it is quite difficult to remove an invasive species once it gains full momentum in the habitat because it can breed and spread quickly, taking over an area. We can make effort to control and remove the invasive species like ensuring their entry in the new habitat that is restricted and properly checked. We need to encourage the development and propagation of native species. Capturing and removal of native, native species should be done on a voluntary basis. Mass awareness should be promoted. Expert needs to be consulted to involve medication which are species-specific in control. Epigenetic changes affects gene expression by turning the genes on and off. Since the environment and behaviors are dynamic, it can lead to epigenetic changes. It is easy to see the connection between the genes and behavior to the environment. Now we know what this epigenetics is all about, its mechanism on how it could turn on and off certain genes by just methylating DNA or through the works of histone modification, resulting to create a certain type of cell functions. But how do we know that it could actually potentially damage our genes, our blueprints that we could pass on with our children, our grandchildren, and the succeeding future generation? Well, it all comes down with the word environment. These environments, it can be through what you eat, through what you breathe, and even to whoever you talk with. And these are the factors of the changes happening to your genome. Just like humans, that is affected by this phenomena, fauna can also be affected by this. And for them, exposure to chemical toxic waste are a threat to them, not only with their health, but the overall health of their offspring. From the air pollutants, the particle matters, the hydrocarbons, some black carbon in our atmosphere, these are some of the toxic gases that can be susceptible to potential diseases, including lung diseases, when exposed. The lifestyle of a parent, in terms of its nutrition and dietary intake and metabolism, could have its effect on its offspring gene expression as well. But not everything results to a negative effect, as in other circumstances, this phenomenon can create a transgenerational resiliency among offsprings, especially with the presence of climate change. Animals experiencing conditions outside their physiological tolerance, and those who are forced to adapt to a warmer temperature and acidification in their environment, epigenesis allows for some animals to respond to and adapt to these changes and pass it off to their offsprings. The bottom line is, by creating a safe and clean air, water, and environment, we can change our genomes in a way that is also safe for the future generations to live in.